right, Carol here. A warm welcome to my craft room today, and I will be designing a card for LDRS, Little Darling Rubber Stamps, as their design team member. And we have some wonderful, wonderful prizes going on if you follow the blog hop. So I will put all that information on my blog and in the description box so you can follow along and I will give you all the product list on my blog as well for what I'm doing. Isn't this exciting? I love blog hops. I love everything about the inspiration and the excitement in the air and all of the cards that are going to be made using these wonderful Little Darling Rubber Stamps and the new release collection. As you can see to my left, look at those inks, all hybrid inks, all 24 of these delicious hybrid inks. And I'm going to show you how I swatch them out and how you can put the names on and store them in a wonderful manner and paint with them. So exciting. I'm going to be introducing all the new releases for Little Darling Rubber Stamps, including the masking paper here. You're going to love this masking paper. It is very unique. So I'm going to use it in my project, but when you see the design team members that are doing the blog hop, uh, if you follow and leave a comment on each one of their blogs, you will be entered to win some wonderful prizes and I'll leave that information. I am not in the blog hop but I am following along and I'm using these delicious products and the Puppy Love has 26 pieces to it and the dies and they're photopolymer the same as the uh, Puppy Time that has 15 pieces including the dies all of these super photopolymer stamps. Much of the product release I was sent from Angie Hunt, the owner of Little Darling Rubber Stamps, and I want to follow along each day using the new releases and the pieces and parts that I was sent as far as the delicious 24 set of inks. And I'm going to show you that you can paint with hybrid inks and it turns out wonderful. So as I'm cutting down the masks with the new masking paper, I think this stuff is gorgeous. You get 12 sheets to a pack and I'll leave that in the description box as well. I want to showcase the products that are going along with the blog hop every day this week. And I'm going to be not only using the masking paper, which you get 12 sheets, like I said, but I'm going to use the Little Darling Puppy Love or Puppy Time Stamp and Die Set and the Puppy Love Stamp and Die Set from Candy Bean. I think you're going to be in love. If you like to do children's card, birthday cards, this is the set for you. So I cut out my masks, I put the tree down, and I am using the Little Darling Creative Embossing Powder in the clear and the white. So I decided for my background, I'm just putting on the powder to uh, so that I don't get any strays when I am heat setting. But I'm going to use the white embossing powder on this. And this is in the new release. I think you're going to love this bright white. It's beautiful. And I'm going to do the entire background and I chose to do it on watercolor Bristol, on the Bristol paper because of the water I'm going to add to it later on. So let's carry on. I covered the tree. I'm going to cover another tree because there's going to be a gate going across that. And I love it because there's a set that actually has a larger gate in the die set but this is the stamped gate so I'm trying to hold it up so it's behind the tree right I put the mask on so anything that I stamp over top of this masking paper is going to be behind so I have both trees down I will stamp nice and I'll press it really well take it up and then when I remove the tree right there. Uh, this is the number for the uh, white embossing powder by the way. 
anything that I lift up will be behind the element of the masking paper. So here's the white, um, beautiful embossing powder. Like I said, it seems like I'm repeating myself, but I, you know how excited I get when I get new things to play with. And you can't get any sweeter elements than to get these sets from uh, LDRS. So one thing I find when I'm creating is to keep my surface as clean as possible because that helps my thought process be emptied out of all clutter. And right here I am. I had a little bit of knowledge what I was going to do as far as a background scene because these are all puppies, right? So you have the dog house, you have all kinds of goodness. All these little puppies have different characters and then I moved with that to give them even more character and give them more technique design. And as always, I try to set some techniques for you to follow. I'm using the beautiful watermark. Uh, it's like Versamark and juicy and oh, you're gonna love, love, love this watermark ink. And it's just clear so that you can use any type of embossing powder uh, behind it, you know, over top of it. It is like a Versamark, juicy, juicy, and it's LDRS Creative Watermark Stamp Pad. Now, I'm going to cover all of my stamped images in white. Uh, I wanted the each image to really pop, and that's why I chose white instead of clear. And on this, I set the gate mask up so that I could have the puppy leaning over. This little puppy comes, he's got a bone that he has in his mouth. And I wanted to showcase that, and we'll show you that later on. And I know I'm moving kind of fast because you know me, I have at least 20 hours worth of work in this one uh, seven by seven inch card of goodness. The fun thing about masking is you get to create like a book. It's like this little mini imagery that comes alive with puppies in the back, in the front, to the side, all showing their unique little character because each one is as cutie patootie as possible. And I put down, you know, kind of like they were out uh, in front of the fence and you have a little doggy trying to get over the fence carrying his uh, huge uh, bone in his mouth trying to get it over the fence and then I snuck in a little dog face in right inside the dog house all these teensy weensy little elements that we'll talk about later so the first thing you want to do is take a set and cut out all the masks you want at that particular time because they're nice and sticky and you can keep them for future projects. So here I'm just gonna follow along because I'm using my Zig Clear Clean Color mar uh, Water Pens, water markers, I want it to flow and I don't wanna worry about all of the uh, paint going outside the imagery. So that's why I chose this beautiful white embossing powder. And uh, the number of that is PDR102. And then if you want the clear powder, which is just as beautiful, you just put in the 101, but all those things will be left. And look at, look at the goodness. I wanted to keep this in. It's just packed full of stamps, packed full of dyes for everything. And you're going to get them in these sets and you're going to get a chance to win them. And all kinds of prizes you've got to get over there and hop on the blog and and like I said my name will not be on the blog but I am following along with these delicious products I was sent and I'm truly grateful and I want to just explode the goodness of the new release and the hybrid inks I'm going to have videos every day and here's the zig clean color pens I'm going to be using on these images and uh, you're going to love it because I'm going to make everything pop on this 7 by 7 inch card. And you know I like to do the inside and the outside, but I'm also going to show you how to do a matching box. So the entire project will zoom together and uh, have that 
pow wow factor that I love. So I took out one of my water brushes. I took out uh, uh, actually a paintbrush as well. And then, uh, yeah, so I'm going to use the water that I have inside the water brushes. I don't need to have all of the extra water mugs and jugs around me. I'm trying to keep my, keep my surface as clean as possible. And I'm going to use the zigs. And as you know, they're packed full of color. So I'm going to take out as many of the browns as I can find here. It doesn't matter. I don't need to put all of the colors down because just get yourself a whole pack full of them in your hand. Yeah, Urgh. put them all in your hand and we're going to get at the coloring. And these little puppies, you want to add character. You know, it's just like the little darling rubber stamp uh, Winnie. You can make her look like your family member. That's how beautiful the stamps are. They give you the open opportunity in the photopolymer set to create beyond, above and beyond, as they say. So now I will set the dark uh, ink down. Well, actually, watercolor. I love to watercolor. And I'll put different shades all over the place. You want your dark. I'm going to put my focal point in the middle, but don't really worry about that. You just want to have some fun coloring, whether you use your Copics, whether you use watercolors like I'm using in the Zigs. Whatever medium you choose to color these little dogs in, you're going to have fun. Now, as I begin to color with the Zigs, and because I'm not in the original uh, blog hop per se, my video will be long and that's because I'm going to show you different ways to use these gorgeous stamps and dies that was sent to me. And um, I think you're going to like the fact that you can fast forward it and come back to it at any time. I will show you a few coloring uh, things that you can do with your zigs that you can actually do with your Copics as well if you like to Copic color. And here if you have, you know, three, four, five different browns and you put one in that's kind of a clay color, you can have a lot of fun. I try to find a water brush that doesn't let out a lot of the water and you can keep a paintbrush, you know, right beside you to sop it up if too much comes out. And I don't know if I told you this, but I'm going to use googly eyes on this little guy. I knew that ahead of time. And he is holding a beautiful little heart and I sat him up. Yep, there's the colors I chose. Any colors would look good on puppies, right? You can't go wrong. You could almost paint them green and they'd look as sweet as can be. And here I have him holding that beautiful heart. I'm going to put the roof the same color as I do the heart. So it gives it a little bit of interest and a focal point for the heart to stand out. And here we go. I'm showing you how easy it is to remove the ink that gets away from you on this Bristol Smooth cardstock. Now I'm going to work on the uh, feet of my little puppy. And see, I'm going to show you here with the nose. If you get ink on the white embossing powder, it will come right off. Just add a little bit of water, press down with your paper towel, and it's gone. It's going just like that. And I want to thank you again for joining us on this wonderful release week. I, I can't wait to see everybody pop in and look at all the wonderfulness that everybody has created on Little Darling Rubber Stamp Design Team. I'm adding some pink and purples and reds in my little heart there. I love the white embossing powder because it gives me room to, uh, you know, not have the error. And that's what you love, right? And I'll take the zigs just like I do my Copics. I'll make my fine little lines for the roof. I'm adding the purple, as you can see. I'll come in with the deep, deep, almost like a lipstick red. I'll add more water and then I'll push it out with a lighter color and some water. It's gorgeous that way. And with the white embossing powder, you can see where you're working. It's not difficult. 
You can add in the corners all your deep colors. And like I said, if you go over the white embossing powder, press down with your paper towel and it's gone. You know, it, this is like a fun, fun week of coloring for me. I absolutely couldn't wait to get this tutorial ready and up. And each day I will be putting something up for Little Darling Rubber Stamps, joining along the blog hop as well, watching and uh, with anticipation what everybody is creating for this blog hop and, you know, all the new releases for Little Darling Rubber Stamps, all the dyes, embossing powders, watermark ink, die cuts, you name it. It's all coming out this week and you're going to love it. The little witty images, the polka doodle images. Oh yeah, here I'm going to make this a gray brown. And look at the way the water moves all of the color. Isn't that gorgeous? And I'm going to show you that I actually did watercolor with the hybrid inks later on and it turned out gorgeous. And here I wanted it to look like a stained wood. You know, that the that the doghouse was just built. It's this aged wood. I love everything aged. I mean, I'm aged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that I love myself, but you know what I mean. Uh, things that have aged have character. And that includes us, my friends. And here we go. You know, it comes with experiential learning. Everything is a learning process, and if I don't like the color, I take it out. That's the beauty of watercoloring. And if I want it in, I just add more. And seriously, I just sat and had a real good time. Couldn't believe all of the yumminess in this new release. Uh, it's crazy gorgeous. So now there's a little bone here that I set up, and you can see that just add some water and literally you're taking away anything that comes outside the border of the lines there. Yeah, it looks like a yummy bone to me. Then I'll go back in, I'll add my dark shades and that includes the roof of the house and the heart. I wanted them to kind of match up, you know, in a little way. So uh, if you're having fun, this all comes together. Add a little bit of yellow for interest. That'll bring that sunshine from the sky down into the wood. I'm going to make some little shingles on the roof. Isn't that awesome? It looks like, like really vintage-y vintage shingles. Oh yeah, gorgeous. And then we're going to just come in with uh, the gray. Now, this needed to be blue. But look how easy it is to just put down the water on the Bristol Smooth and experiment with all different colors for the sky. You can't make a mistake. And I make sure that right close to that image, I am going to have dark tones, close to the image. I love blooms. So if you see a lot of blooming going on, it's because that's my style. I really do like the blooms. So I'm going to go in, but I want it to be playful because this is going to be a birthday card. When I'm finished, it's seven by seven inches. And as I'm going to just make this product filled with the new releases and 24 hybrid inks. I mean, that's crazy. That's just, I adore hybrid inks. And I told you before in my last video that how do you know what a hybrid ink is? It's between having a, if a dye ink, uh, mama had a pigment ink daddy and they had a baby, they would have a hybrid ink because it doesn't dry right away. It gives you time to emboss, but it doesn't stay on top of the paper as long as a pigment ink. So that's where you can look. It's the middle line and it's wonderful. So here I'm adding some of the green. I'm keeping the dark tones close to anything that's an image. I'll add some little grass myself. I stamped some little grass in there, as you can see on the right-hand side of the box. Then I'm going to move into the fence. Look at that dog trying to carry that huge, crazy bone 
over top of the fence. And I have a big bull mastiff, and I can see when she was a puppy her doing this because she thought and still thinks she can do anything. <laughs> so that's why I loved this set. Each little animal had its own little character, and this one was a cutie patootie carrying a 50-pound dog bone over the fence. So here we go. When you're doing uh, an image, just keep your dark lines where you think the shape be. And then you're in like Flynn. It works out perfectly. Look at that. And have fun. These are animals. This is what we do when we color in animals. It's not like we're doing a portrait, you know. So um, for time's sake, I'm going to just show you that I went through the trees of the hybrid inks. I went in with my watercolor brush and I just pushed that hybrid ink down onto an acrylic block and painting like I would if it was the watercolors. And look at how beautiful that hybrid ink colors. I mean, you could do that whole imagery, all these images with just the hybrid inks. Now I'm adding some glaze to the heart, to all the, you know, the bone, to the uh, watering jug down on the bottom there beside the little uh, doggy that's trying to get away with this cupcake. I ended up doing something different with the cupcake too. And um, yeah, look at that uh, tin I did it silver, the tin watering uh, bowl down there, and the sky, I finished up the gates, finished up the grass, and when you're doing water coloring and you put your color down, just sop it up with your paper towel, and you get these kind of uh, hills and uh, poofiness on your grass, then you can add some little grass marks, you know? But the one mistake I made on here, as you can see, that second tree, the one that's behind the first one, the trunk is too short. <laughs> that was a masking mistake. So I'm going to cover that with another uh, tree that I stamp and I cut out. Well, actually, I die cut it. And then I'm going to put it on a wobble. And here I'm adding the Nouveau Eyes. On top, I wanted to show a little bit of the white from the embossing powder, so I'll go around, put all of the eyes in, and then wherever I choose that I want to add boggly eyes or googly eyes, whatever you call them, I'll do that later. Here it's seven by seven, remember, and here I wanted the eyes looking up, like he's trying to get that bone over that fence and he's looking up. Oh, help me here. Yeah, I'll show you what I do with that too. I have a riot when I'm making scenes like this, especially a little kid's birthday card. Yowzer, that's a lot of fun. So here we go. My grandson is sitting beside me and he wanted to, uh, I said to him, well, let me let Nanny stamp some out. And this is what stamping's all about. It's for our grandchildren, our children. Let them all join in when you're creating something, especially in the coloring stage or let them see you do uh, different techniques because they're like a sponge. My little grandson, he's like a sponge and he just sits there and he just can't wait to get his little hands in. Here I'm just cleaning off the stamp to the side. Before I put it away, I'm going to do more coloring and Hunter's going to help me with some of it. I need to have a sentiment. So look at the hybrid ink. One time stamp right down on the paper. hundred and This one is the 140 pound cardstock that I have. I'm going to put a whole bunch of those little bones all the way around. And this is another day of coloring. I did my videos this week and here I'm just thinking, okay, what am I going to do with this sentiment? Mm -hmm. And yeah, sometimes I have to take a think, you know, just sit aside, fold my hands and say, you know, what am I going to do next? And then the idea will come to me. So I wanted to have the sentiment in the center of the tree die. I thought that'd be fabulous. And that way I get to cover my little error on the tree when I was masking. I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. And here you go. 
Isn't that fun? I love little puppies. Yeah, I'm reaching for something. Excuse me there. And then we're going to continue on because not only am I going to do the outside, you know I always do the inside of my cards. So I'll put this down. We're going to die cut a lot of the puppies so that I can color them all in. And then we're going to continue on having a whole lot of fun on this release week and uh, blog hop and prizes and it's a crafter's dream. Today, tomorrow, right up till Friday, you're going to love it. And make sure you check out all the design team members' projects. They are beautiful. So here I'm going to put the tree down, stamp it, because it's just the outside image, right? So I'm going to stamp it and then I am going to uh, die cut it. So I took the black hybrid ink, one time stamp. This stuff is powerful black, let me tell you. The next thing I need to do is die cut as much, as many, excuse me, elements that I can to add to there and look it. I'm going to cover up the trunk behind there. That was the objective. Add another dog to the bottom just so that it's all in symmetry. I use the rule of thirds on the coloring as far as the sky with the grass and I'm super excited. Here's that die set that I use. It's a background builders one and I love this. Now this long element right there you can die cut and use it as uh, one of those uh, back and forth you know where you put the coin behind your object and it just goes back and forth back and forth. But on the inside they're stitching so you can sew. So I just used the inside of this background builders one set. I wanted to sew some gold thread in. I wanted to add an element of luxury, so to speak. I love gold thread and I wanted to incorporate it into my card here and use up these fabulous uh, LDRS dies, stamps, papers. Look at this. So I'll set that aside. I ran it through. I've got my little stitches around the top into the sky. And now we need to uh, give some doggy some character. So I take my Copic Multiliner and I'm going to add those two teeth. You know the one, I'm going to have one big tooth come down and on the other side one big tooth go up. You know where they look, <laughs> but in a cute way. You know, the little bulldogs that have that tooth, some of them have them, uh, you know, one on one side and one going down on the other. And then I added little hair bangs to the one I want, a little girl and a little boy dog. See their teeth? Look at that. One, oh, the little boy had two teeth going uh, on the outside and the little girl had one going up, one going down. How crazy cute. And look at her bangs. Oh, yeah. And now we have to color them in. Let's begin. We've got our little dogs and I'm going to give one of our little dogs some glasses like you see here. I'm going to get out my browns because brown dogs are so crazy sweet. And let's carry on. I'm going to switch over to Copics. I'm going to take my E50 which is a nice uh, eggshell color and I'm going to saturate my little dog, my little bulldog there. And, yeah, the little girl one as well. And then I'm going to jump over to have, uh, this is the E53. And then I'm going to go to the E55. So I'm going to have a light, a mid-tone, and a dark tone. And we're going to just blend them all in and have fun. This set is all about fun. When you have puppies and kitties and all kinds of goodness, this is coloring fun for sure. So you're going to take the lines out with the lighter colors, you know, my mid-tone here. I think I'm going to use it so that the sunlight's coming straight on the center of the face. You can always push back your colors with a lighter Copic color. And yeah, I was just sitting here to see how much shading I would have. Nothing stressful, absolutely nothing. This was fun took my E57 to darken it up even more and I love that walnut shade. 
that light walnut. And then we're going to move along and we'll grab the mid-tone. We'll take out some of those lines. And this is the fun, fun part of uh, coloring with Copics on animals. And then I'm going to go back to that shell color, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just having fun. And my cardstock is my white 140 pound, so it's really taking in the color well for Copics. And like I said, I will push back the color with a lighter color. Very seldom do I use the zero. I'm going to add some pink, like, you know, almost a red cheeks because I want it to look kind of, uh, you know, I'm so cute. <laughs> then I took my Copic Multiliner and I'm going to go around all the white marks because I did go out of the lines. So this is the way that you uh, take care of that. You take your Multiliner, color in, and don't worry about it. Don't even, or you could take a white pen your signal white pen and go over the white. But because this is the little boy dog, I wanted to add the black element. It makes them kind of look rough and tough. I go over the edges with my black memento uh, tuxedo black ink, and then I'll start again. Just giving this little guy some deep colors in his ears, keep the center of his face light, down at the bottom of his paw seal, I push back the color with my lighter tones. It's, it's wonderful. All coloring is wonderful. And then I'm going to dot it with the tips of my light marker, probably the E53 uh, or the 50. Here's the colors that I used. And uh, yeah, that's the total of them there. I'll give him some red cheeks again, and I'll just keep working back and forth. I'm going to take my, um, you know how I like to make the fur? I'm going to do that as well with the face cloth. I'm going over his little teeth. I'm going over his chain. You know, look at that. I love that chain. It's so cute. And then I gave him a little bit of a tongue underneath there. And then we're going to move on to our little uh, girlfriend dog here. And we're going to just, I'm going to go with the grays with this one. So I'm going to switch over from the browns. We'll go to the grays. Love, love, love the easiness, the simplicity of Copics, isn't it? I mean, I just took the T4 and um, yeah, having fun. Just keep going. Saturate that paper that you have. Make sure it's Copic friendly paper and it'll withstand all of that wet ink. And uh, yeah, you're on your way to building some real cute, cute dogs. I'll grab a T5 and work my way up from the T4. So um, yeah, I tried to get the colors in there for you so that you could see it. And then I pushed back the eye with a T2 with a lighter tone. That way I don't have to use the zero. I don't want to push it back with uh, you know, empty ink, like with a non-ink. Then I made his eye really pop. Look at that. It just makes it look like he has fur on his body, doesn't it? I'll give her, and it's a her, I'll give her her little bangs back. I will take my memento black and I will push it back in. And then I'm just having fun with the eyes with the T5. And this is nothing but fun going on here. Yep. And then I'll add some little dots with my 110 black Copic. I'll go around the edges, add some dots. This is going to give me texture when I grab the Copic um, and the face cloth. I'll show you that technique in just a minute. Here I just want to show a little bit of femininity in my little puppy. So I'm going to give it some character by using my Signal White Pen. And look at those little hearts around her neck, a little bracelet, or a necklace, excuse me, with the little pearls. I'm going to add some Nouveau Black Drops on both their eyes, on their little snout. And then later on, I will go over it. Well, right here, I'm going over the white with my white signal pen, where I came out of the line with the Copic, and added the little teeth. <laughs> look at her. <laughs> I added some a little lips there, and oh, look at two more dogs. 
It's never going to end. That's this set, I'm telling you. Gorgeous. Look at these guys. They have a little bouncy ball. I'm going to take my, I think I took the, the E50. Then I'm going to go over it with the T4. All experimenting. And this is what I'm doing on my tutorial. Although I'm not on the blog hop, I am on the can't wait to show you all of these products with little darling rubber stamps that uh, came out. Angie Hunt, you are a genius when it comes to your designs, I'm telling you. And here's my white fiber face cloth. That's a Costco face cloth, in case you're wondering. And then I'm going to put some 110 black down on his uh, face, on that furry face. I'm going to take my Copic solution here, open it up. And then I'm going to press down so that I can get some, look at that, fiber fur, I call it. Just put some of your Copic blender solution on a face cloth that has all that fiber. And I find the Costco face claws, they're huge. I love them. Then I'm going to go around and make this one have little round glasses. Look at with the white Signo Bride Uniball pen. And his little snout, I'll change to black, I think. I do the eyes inside, yeah, the black. I add a little, uh, his little license tag on his, uh, under his fur there on his face. And you know what? You just make that dog whatever you want. Angie's already created the, you know, him as cute as can be anyway. So why not have a dog with glasses, right? I use my Memento Tuxedo Black to go around all my die cut images if I want the, you know, to change it up so that you can't see the white cardstock. Take my Nouveau again. And then I noticed right there that it dripped a bit on the left eye. And I thought, that's fantastic. That's the little girly, the girl dog. And then the boy dog has the glasses. I put some Nouveau Glaze in on the eyeballs. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, I love it. And then a smile. And then the little fur on his fuzzy little cheeks. And then once you do that, I'll add some more Nouveau to stand out. But I took some, of, just get some, a glitter pen and go over the, um, those curly cues I made with the white pen on him. And there you have it. I've got sparkle glitter all coming out. And it takes away the harshness of the lines. And it adds dimension. Love it. Then I added the 110 black on the little bouncy ball, some glaze, and then I'm going to deck her out so she's all pretty. I'll outline the edges, put some curly cues once again on the ears of him with some more glaze. And doesn't he have character? Eyelashes. Look at that. A little smiley face some tuft on the center, you know, some tuft on her fur in front of her face. Oh, she is adorable. Just adorable. I add a little bit of glitter pen and we're going to go back to the card. Love it. I had so much fun. I could have just kept making cards with this. It was amazing. But I had other videos to get up with this release that uh, I just fell in love with everything I received uh, in the mail. I love designing for Little Darling Rubber Stamps and I can't wait until you go over on the blog hop and see all the amazing things going on every day. Today, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yummy. Yeah. So now I'm going to, this is, this portion here, I'm going to need to make a gusset, right? Because on the inside, I'm going to have a surprise on the inside. We are going to have dogs pop up so it looks like they bounced right out of the air with balloons and a bone, everything airborne. So I need to make a gusset. And how do I do that? I just score my lines one beside each other. As you can see here, a quarter of an inch. Then I slide the stylus over one line. And that gives me this sixteenth of an inch gusset, and I love it. And it gives me room to put goodness on the inside of the card, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that as well. 
So take the tape off, seat it like, you know, any way you're comfortable with it. And there's my gusset on top and let's create the inside. This is crazy cute and I want to showcase the beautiful papers. The 6x6 paper is called Sincerely Yours and it has the black and white or white and black polka dots, however you want to say it. And there you have it. Put it on nicely and I'm going back to that uh, Background Builders 1 set. And here I'm in my thought process. Okay, what do you want to do here? I want those dots out of that set. And I'm going to poke it through with one of my sewing needles, my long darning needle. And I'll poke the holes just a little bit thicker so I can add that gold thread I had in my stash. And I'm going to distress, of course I'm going to distress all the edges, right? And um, I hope you don't mind that I took this long on this card. Most of my subscribers don't mind at all. But I want to show you all the instead of making five cards with different elements I make one card and I put all of the elements on it and then you can pick and choose what you like you know out of it here I needed to cover up that trunk so I added some uh, glaze to my tree and remember I painted this with the hybrid inks I just pressed the greens down on an acrylic block took a paintbrush a little bit of water and went to town and look at the texture in those trees. It really does look like uh, leaves and leaves and leaves all over the place in the background. And then I brightened up the, the tree in the front. I put a little wobble on there. I'm getting situated in my chair. <laughs> I put a wobble behind there because what little child doesn't want something? Watch, my grandson went crazy when he saw this that there was a wobbly tree and a little wobbly doggy. There he is, look at him, boink, boink. <laughs> oh, he loved it. He loved this card. And you know, I let him just sit there and join me and explain what I was doing. I mean, he's three years old, but he sure did have a blast. I put one of the dogs down and uh, yeah. I'm sorry I had to stop there. We're having our laneway, um, the gravel, like all the stones leveled. <laughs> and he just started doing it now as I'm doing the voiceover. Excuse me for that. I'm sorry. So here I am going to make myself a little cupcake. I want that cupcake to pop off the little dog's arm. He's, his eyes are looking down at the bone in his dish. And he's trying to decide, do I take this? cupcake and eat it or do I take the doggy bone that I'm supposed to have and the other two dogs over on the left I'm telling Hunter they're eyeing that and they're thinking no I think I want that bone and Hunter's going Nanny what's he gonna get is he gonna get the bone or the cupcake and I said well you watch Hunter watch what Nanny does and I'm coloring it in and I'm telling you he loved this set if you have grandchildren or little children, this set for a birthday is the ultimate set. Let me just tell you that. Not because I was sent it, because I believe it is. And that's number 3083. It's called Puppy Time. And then there is the, the 7087 is Puppy Love. And that's the new releases. Look it. And you can just draw it out by looking at the little cupcake uh, that the designer put in to the stamp and put it over top. I wanted it bigger because I wanted it to say, um, uh, which one am I going to take? Do I want my cupcake or do I want my bone? And the other dogs, I said, Hunter, what are the other dogs thinking? Well, I don't know, Nan. Look at that one peeking out from the doghouse. I mean, we had a whole story going on with this card. It was story time, and I put a little bog, woggle, 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 woggle underneath the brown puppy so he could jiggle. Hunter loved that. And together we sat and did this project for Little Darling Rubber Stamps for a little portion of it together. I think it's fun. And uh, he helped me, actually, because he's looking at it, and he's just telling the story along with me. 
and he thought up this to have a little dog wobbling right out in the front, you know, like the tree. He loved the tree. And it says, it's your birthday. Pause and celebrate it. Celebrate. Get it? Pause. And that's why we have all those little palm marks I was telling him all over the ground. Yeah, so then we'll just glaze up what we want there in the, look at, there he is. Look at his little hands. I, oh, my heart just pitter-pattered as I watched him play with this card. And that tells you it's a good stamp set. When a three-year-old loves it, oh yeah. So I made a little cut around his mouth because I, at the last minute, I decided to add two bones. This puppy's kind of a chubby pup puppy, so I thought, he's not bringing one bone over there. No, my dog would want to get as many bones over as she could, my cinnamon, you know, 130-pound bone mastiff, while this little puppy wants two bones over. <laughs> it's telling a story. Look at the dots from that builder that background builder one set. Love that. And uh, now I can take my, my uh, black nouveau. I made some eyes and then I made this mouth and it looked like a wiener, you know, like a, a hot dog wiener. <laughs> Inside the doghouse, yuck, I could not have that. All the dogs would be attacking the wiener. So I put some brown Copic over top of it and we're going to start over later. So back to the glaze on the icing and the cherry and wherever you feel you uh, want it. And then I went over all the white with my Signo pen and uh, we just sat and looked at it to see what else we could do. And here my, my big long sewing needle, we're going to add some of this beautiful gold thread I had in my stash. It's thicker than a thread. Look at <laughs> I'm trying to sew, and Hunter's trying to boing boing the elements. How cute is that? So I said, Hunter, can you just let Nanny sew this for a minute, and then I'll let you boing boing that thing as much as you want. So I went across with the gold thread, and uh, yeah, isn't that pretty? And then when I got to the end, I took it through the second hole so that I could tie it and make a bow. So I just cut it off. I took scotch tape and taped it down in the back, put a bow right here as my grandson is watching me do this birthday card out of the new release. He thought it was, I was going to say the cat's meow, but <laughs> it was the dog's bark because this is a beautiful set. Now um, I just want a little bow up there and we're going to add a few more elements wait and see until a little later and look at you don't have to worry about clean and simple you can make that you know whatever because my 140 pound cardstock can take anything we went to our stash and hunter said nanny why don't you take a blue and a green piece of that uh, foam i get this at walmart and it has the sticky on one side and he thought it would be wonderful to be able to see green and blue on the sides of the card. I mean, this is what I'm saying. When you create with your children or grandchildren, they help your creativity. They, they seem to shove it into first gear. And uh, so that's what we did. We put the green down and then over top of it to get that lift, we put the blue. It matched the sky, it matched the grass, and all was cool. And showcase, oh yeah, we showcased these two. Uh, stamp sets beautifully I think I just love them so here I'm showing him how you have to keep your fingers away from the cutting blade and I he was sitting right on my lap so I did the lifting and then I would let him hold it down and showed him how to press it really hard you know fast a quick swipe and here he's watching I'm showing him how to do it and uh, yeah fun fun that's what we had and look at and the lime green ink the hybrid ink and then I said no put your thumb out of the way and then snap it down see how we, oh nanny said we didn't do it then I said no 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 no. let's try it again don't get discouraged you just have to do it again and I showed him how to do it and hold it down 
and he did a quick one there. See how he's keeping his thumbs out of the way? Oh yeah, always, always, always watching him if I'm using anything like that, the guillotine cutter. And now he is smoothing it out and he's actually feeling like he's creating with me. He took the back off here and I set it down. Look at that. His little hands couldn't wait to press it down. And then I just lifted it up, lifted it up. I lift it up. <laughs> he had fun with everything, even the back release paper. He was having a blast. I wanted to keep this in the video because this is the fun of it, isn't it? That uh, you can create and know that these sets really do, uh, I don't know, they really, he's three and he absolutely loved each doggy. He loved each element. He loved the double-sided tape. Yes, and I'm there. Keep your fingers away. Sometimes you get so excited, but uh, anyway, we took the back off. We added some of the double-sided tape and had lots of fun together. That's the key. And I hope you're liking it so far. And now I wanted to take my polka dot paper and I wanted to add this. Uh, it's a six piece set in the background builder one set. There's a builder one and a builder two. Now watch what you get out of this. Now if you just use the center, you would get that beautiful dotted pattern. But once you put the die cut on the outside of it, I'm going to be able to put, look at that, I'm going to be able to put those beautiful scallops all the way around this 6x6, six six, I'm sorry, 7x7 seven seven inch card. And um, it was 6x6 six six when I started it. It was 7x7 seven seven when I put the scallops on. I want to make sure you know that. So all together it was 7x7 seven seven when we create the box. And then I just added some glue, put it down like that. It has stitches in it, this builder set. So you could actually sew that as well. That's what I want to showcase with this builder set. It has stitches that you can actually sew. Look at that. And then I'll put it away and I'll take it out probably five more times. <laughs> Now I want to hold down those uh, beautiful scallops, so I put some double-sided tape. We'll take that off. I needed to correct this one because I measured it and it wasn't exact. So uh, as exact as you, uh, you know, you can get. And look how the black and white just pops the browns off the page, pops the green. And I thought, and it, look at, it popped out my green sweater because that lime hybrid ink, it just makes you want to dress in lime. <laughs> look at Hunter. Look at, okay, Nan, look at this. Yeah, I think we should, let, yeah, I like his little eyes there. And what should I put there? Okay, put some little dots there, Nan. And uh, little eyeballs on that other one. He's kind of sharing with me. Now, remember, he's on my lap. So, well, actually, he, we shared a chair. We shared a chair. So, uh, yeah, we got out some dots. He's getting comfortable. He said, we need to have some apples on those trees, Nan. So I grabbed some dots, and we put some apples, some green apples and some yellow apples on the trees. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is the creation of a three-year-old, too. He's joining in and seeing how beautiful you can take supplies like this and put everything together. It's gorgeous. So then I just put, uh, I was going to put this behind it, but I realized whether you put it on the front or the back, you're going, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever unless you're going to sew it. And then I was thinking, well, maybe I need to do it like this, you know, have the opposite end. Um, yeah, but it all worked out in the wash. It didn't matter which end I put up, whether you put this on the front or whether you put it on the back. It all came out perfect. And uh, yeah, so now I need a piece of white cardstock. So I'm going to measure to make sure that it is as close to being right on as I could get. 
This piece is for my flip card, you know, for my uh, acetate pieces that I'm going to add the dog, the bone, and the two balloons. So this is what you have to do. You need to have your card stock the width, right? So that is going to be six inches. That was the width of the card base. Without the scallops, was six inches. Then I need to add three extra inches to it to make the center line. Now, you don't need, this doesn't need to meet all the way to the top. And let me show you that. I needed to know the center line. So I folded it in half and I just pressed a little bit with my fingers, took it to the scoreboard, made sure I butt it up against the top, take my styling uh, tool and make a crease right there. I go over, yes, just go over a half an inch. Yep. I'm deciding here. I don't want it one inch. I want it over a half inch because I only need a little portion and you're going to use it as a mountain and a valley so that you have, you know, your center score mark and then two over a half inch, your center score mark and two half inch over to the right and to the left. And then you'll pinch it together you're going to put double-sided tape on each side, like all of them, but don't take the tape off yet. But put it on the front, the back, the inside, front and back, and then we'll wait to create. So you have half-inch double-sided tape on there. And see how it doesn't reach to the back, like it doesn't reach the whole length? That doesn't matter. We're going to cover it with paper. So I took some liquid glue, and this is where I'm going to seed it. Remember, I have a gusset. So when make sure when you're folding it, the center line of that piece of paper is inside the gusset. Now I'm going to make sure that it is even on each side. Then you're going to take the scallop pieces and it's going to go on each side of your mountain valley fold. Okay? So... Uh, we took score tape and we put it down on the inside, half inch. Yeah, I'm just going to cut that off so it's flush. And then we're going to have it on the inside and the outside. Okay. And now I'm going to need to do the same thing to the other side with the liquid glue to hold it down. And then we are going to be on the more creative side of the inside of the card. You're gonna love it. And like I said, I am using as much product as I can from all of this release. Even in this one card. Look at the polka dots. Don't you love black and white polka dots? And this is, these have little dots if you wanted to sew thread through them. You know, if you had a card stock that was, say, pink and you wanted to add red uh, thread to it. Possibilities are endless, I'm telling you. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to put that down because some of my, most of my dogs were either gray or brown. Happy birthday, happy birthday. That's what I'm getting. That's the vibe. Hunter was singing that. Happy birthday, Nan. Happy birthday, puppy birthday, happy birthday. We were having a blast. Yeah, I have a blast when I do my voiceovers. I'm sorry. I do. This is what I really do. I sit here and I have, I go back to my childhood. I mean, it's a birthday puppy card. You can't help it. So now I need to cover the backs, right? I need to cover the backs of these puppies because these are going to be floating puppies on acetate. So just go around the edges, fussy cut. Then we're going to take our um, glue, our liquid glue. We're going to put these to the back so you don't see the Copic coloring through it and we're on the way but don't glue them on yet no 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 that's what hunter says no 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 <laughs> yeah don't do it i did look at i put it on and then i thought no i have to put, look at i'm even pressing down on it yikes i'm taking the marks off that i made with my pencil i'm making like i'm doing the right thing and i wasn't i had to separate i go around it with my mom Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And then I think, oh no, I have to put my acetate in between. So I just ripped it. Yeah. 
cut your, I cut my acetate pieces to a quarter of an inch. And then I took the scissors, if I wanted it to be more narrow, I just cut it more narrow with my scissors. I didn't even bother with the cutter. But you can see at a quarter of an inch, it's quite nice. Clean the area. Then after I lifted it up, I put my acetate back under right there. Yeah, I got a little clog. Oh, <laughs> and then I pressed it, my muscles, I pressed it so hard it popped the top off. But once we got that all situated, it made Hunter laugh, you know, when that popped off. Then you're gonna put your acetate in between the black and the Copic colored white uh, cardstock. I added some glaze to the back white, so it just gave it a little bit of furriness, you know, uh, doggy fur. And we're going to do that with all of them. So I'm going to have a quarter inch acetate cut and uh, yeah, go around the edges, cut it out, then get your eraser, and I use that black eraser. I don't use the erasers on pencils because sometimes they leave waxy marks. So uh, the click white eraser is quite nice that I have. I'll try to remember to leave a link. And here we go. We're taking all of our dogs, each one with its own character. And that's the puppy love set and the puppy time set. And we're going to add the beautiful acetate in between. And this is what's going to flip in the center when you open the card. I mean, nothing but surprise fun. Now we're going to add the corners to this. See how it stands up so nicely? So I just took one of the scallop pieces, rounded it out, cut it in almost three quarters. So I cut a quarter off, as you can see there, and tucked it away into the corner. So it looked like that scallop went all the way around, all the way down, and look at that. Isn't it cute? Yes, this little darling rubber stamp is gorgeous. You're gonna love them. Every element, the dies, everything. So here we have the Mountain Valley um, folds in the center and we put our double-sided tape on the inside, the outside, the inside, the outside. I took one of the, I forgot that I need to put my, my acetate in there. So cut your acetate pieces to whatever side you want your little dogs or your balloons. In this case I had two balloons, a black dot polka dot one, a white polka dot one. I had the three little doggies and then I covered them with the polka dot scallop. See that? So I put the little acetate pieces in the center then I put the scallop over top. Now I'm going to add this to the back. But the beauty of it, I didn't close it all the way. See that? You have that little bit on the top portion of the scallop you can work with. And here's where I added the bone, which I cut to a sixteenth of an inch on the um, acetate. I cut around the balloon so that the acetate wasn't showing on the actual bottom of that piece of balloon. So I cut around it and you'll see that in the final pictures. Oh yeah, balloons, balloons. Aren't they gorgeous? Yeah, I wish I had I had uh, the black and white balloons to go up in the air, but this was close enough that I think everybody knows it is a child's birthday card. I wouldn't mind getting this birthday card, are you kidding me? So I had one of those bones left over, so I added one to the front of the acetate, one to the back, cut it very narrow with my scissors. Then I slid it down the front of the Mountain Valley folds we have in the center. And there you go, liquid glue, that's all you need. And I have a black and white balloon. And I just cut this out of that uh, scallop paper to look like a balloon. I mean, the easy peasy went around the edges with the memento tuxedo black ink i took some glaze and i left a little hole of the glaze so that you could get that kind of uh you know that uh rubbery look that you get with balloons when you blow them up i just left a little piece of the glaze not on the paper and that gave it that kind of uh you know luminous look 
that uh, a balloon has. I was just showing you right there really fast how I left it empty. Gave it some depth and the luminosity that you get when you pull on the uh, balloon elastic portion, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I'm just trying to explain it there. Yeah, leave that pink out, Carol. <laughs> so, black, of course. I got out my 110-pound black cardstock because it goes with the polka dots. And I put one on each side. I distressed the edges. And I got out the second builder. It's called Cutting Edge Borders 1. Love it. You get the stitched hills and you get the stitched scallop. And it's a double stitch scallop. Wait till you see this die. You need this in your stash. And like I told you on my last video, Teflon coated dies. Beautiful. Now, I was going to use the pink and make hills on here, but I changed my mind in midstream. And you know I do that, don't you? I always have a plan and then I go with another plan. But this tutorial is to showcase what was sent to me and promote the blog hop and all of the releases and all the fun that's going on this week over at LDR. Make sure you check out LDRS. Check out the Facebook group, the Instagram, um, the LDRS Creative on uh, Facebook and all of the prizes that are going on this week. Now here's where I added my um, green apples and my yellow apples. I took that heart, put it upside down, and it looked like the face of a dog, like the little muzzle face. And then I put the two eyes inside the dog house. This is the fun part I was having. And uh, yeah, you can use whatever elements to really um, add to your card. Took a little bit of Coca-Cola to get some energy. Here it is. Look at these sets. The candy bean set. I love it. And that one is 7087, but all of it will be in my description, especially over on my blog. You'll be able to go and see all the wonderful stuff over at the store. Now, this is baby powder that I keep in an uh, old-fashioned icing jar. And then on the top of the icing jar, I put, um, I put some masking tape on, and then I just cut through the hole so only a little bit comes out. And there you have it. I'm going to use the wonderful, wonderful embossing. Um, well, actually, I'm going to use the white ink. That's the hybrid white. And then I'm going to use the watermark as well. So I'm going to show you how it works with both. So here's the white. I'm going to put it down. You have lots of time. I grab some gold embossing powder and look at the crisp image using that white ink. And here's the watermark. Now look at how juicy that is. Wow. That's all I'm saying right there is wow. That watermark ink is the best I've used to date. It's beautiful. Then I'm going to put it down with white. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> yes. Talk about dogs. Wow. He scared me. <laughs> He always does, doesn't he? And here it's Friends Fur, if you are ever. Friends Forever. And I'm showcasing the white uh, embossing powder. Just beauteous. I love it. So now I picked out the papers I wanted out of that paper pack. Is that gorgeous or what? I'm going to cover the backs of the front scallop here. Easy to do. I just cut all of these out with the Teflon beautiful dyes. Look at the colors of the teal dyes. You have the pink and the teal with the new release. Yumminess. Then I took some double-sided tape, put it on the back, and I'm going to seed it because you know me with my cards. I want to make sure they never come apart. Eva, Eva. And yeah, I distressed the edges of all the black cardstock first. And then I'm going to take some more tape and we're going to go around and put the... Uh, excuse me, I'm using tape here. <laughs> Love it. I cut the... Isn't he cute? Talk about dogs. He wants to join the club. Yeah. So I cut the corner off of this one piece. I turned it over. 
so that it was showing on the reverse side. I folded it down, put double-sided tape on the inside, took it off and made it look like the corner came down because these aren't double-sided patterns, right? But that's as easy peasy as it is. Just cut it off, turn it around, fold it down, add some double-sided tape and you have yourself, it looks like that the paper was double-sided, right? And now I'm going to put uh, the scallops, I'm going to add more scallops actually on white cardstock. I needed to have some white so that when the acetate dogs come down, they are coming down on the white because you can't see them if it has patterned paper. And look at these triple scallops. Beautiful. I'm just cutting my white cardstock straight. You will see how gorgeous this is when you look at the pictures at the end of the tutorial. Fabulous. I distressed only the two sides. I put it, see, the dogs needed to be showcased there onto white. I used liquid glue, seating it down, and then I'm going to add the bone and the two balloons. But I wanted you to see this. Then we're going to add another element. I'll show you that in a minute. Isn't that cute? Look at the triple scallop. The centers come out. Or you can put it back in. Say you did one in black and one in white. You could uh, put those little pieces back with black and then the white in with the black and the black in with the white. Yada yada. You know what I mean. Keep your space nice and clean. Then I cut around my sentiment that I put on the black cardstock. When you distress things, you can use your scissors. You don't have to wor worry about being precise. I did the same thing. I put a piece of that fun foam on the back to raise it up just a bit. And look at that, friends forever. And then look at, that's how you get that beautiful flip by putting the centerpiece. Doesn't need to reach the edges, remember, just by scoring it on the inside. Two over from the center line on the right, two over on the center line to the left. Fold them in like a sandwich and you have yourself the folds that you need to put the acetate in between. Now I'll seat the black. Isn't it a wonderful surprise to have the same elements as the front of the card that we used watercolors and Copics and to have the elements on the inside as a pop wow factor. I think children, myself included, any age, will love to open this up and see nothing but black and white with a dash of pink. So cute. Now I'm seeding the balloons. I put one balloon, the black and white one there, right in front of the bone because I put the acetate so thin holding the bone. It's so narrow, right? And look at it. Yeah. Boink. <laughs> so you know I'm going to add this beautiful pattern paper and that's out of the pack as well. And you know what I was going to do here, I actually tore it down the center. I was going to add some green and it did nothing for me. You know sometimes you can work on an element and it just doesn't do anything. So you have to come back again with a different plan, that's all. So what I did, I took my cutter, I cut that off, and make sure you keep that because you can make balloons out of that little corner piece. And I distressed the edges, I cut another piece out of white using that delicious Cutting Edge Borders 1 die, that's number CB102. And that has the triple uh, stitching in the scallop and also the centers come out, like the half scallop comes out in the die. Love that. You can do so many things with it, especially if you're working with black and white, right? So here I cut down the edges, took out the little centers. I'm going to distress each side and then we're going to have a plan. So it looks like the element on the top. Isn't this beautiful? And then you get to write your sentiment on it as well. This was nothing but fun for me. Absolute delight for me to create this for you. I had a blast. And you know, you could do this as a card in itself, as the front. It doesn't have to be on the inside. I used liquid 
glue, of course, to set this down. Then on top, I put that little piece. Make sure you distress it as well on the edges. I butt it up just about to the upper portion, to the scallops there. And uh, yeah, you can work with it because you use the liquid glue, which is awesome. Then inside each scallop, I put some dots, some black uh, glue dot, or just those dots you get. I thought that was a nice addition. I didn't want to wait for the Nouveau glue to dry to make my own dots. So this was the next best thing is to have your little uh, dot packages. And now I want super thin, crisp, um, black line to go across the bottom. Remember that scalloped and we put glue on there so it's sticky. You don't want any sticky when this is going up and down as you're opening the card. So I just add a little line of black paper. I put it on each side of the mountain fold scallops right there. And that way it covered up the sticky. I'm getting close in there so you can see it. Cut it flush with the sides. So crazy pretty, isn't it? Once I get the bow tied how I like it, I just want a tiny one. I'm going to put a flat back pearl black one up on there as well to match the pattern. And yeah, take that green cardstock away. <laughs> That's from the set I had before uh, this new release that I used on my last video. I'm going to distress the edges. Make sure you clean off your card so it's nice and flat when you put your double-sided tape down. Yes, I don't, you know, I don't like anything to budge when I do a card. Yeah, that's a better angle. I'm going to put this down as the back. I'm going to leave it plain and simple. You can see at the top portion that I have my uh, fold in there, my gusset. And then I put a black, flat, black, per flat, back pearl. I put two large ones on the bottom corners. Look at, just play around there. But you know what? You don't want to have um, an envelope for this. You want to make yourself a box because it has that depth. And it's clean. It's clean and simple. Look at the back has nothing on it. Look at all the elements. Let me slow that down. So now I brought it down a little slower so you could see how it had all the elements of a birthday card. It was, you know, the black, the back of it was nice and flat. You just had the two pearls. Then you have the folds that you needed to sandwich in the acetate so that those animals were went back and forth. I'm going to add a quarter of an inch of black cardstock on to separate the flowers from the white cardstock. Nice and thin, let me just say. I took it down from the quarter inch to nice and thin. Yes, I didn't think the thick worked. And uh, yeah, I'm just seeding it back and forth. It does add something, doesn't it, when you add that? It's really pretty. And then clean up once again. Then I'm going to take my cardstock and cut a nice thin you know, about a sixteenth of an inch. Put some glue on there. I'm going to set it at the bottom of this, all the way from edge to edge of the white cardstock and the floral. I went to the outer edge of the floral, cut it off, and it's that finishing touch, isn't it? Well, we're going to move along to the base. I always use the bottom portion of the base of the boxes I make for my cards if they're thick. Now the card itself is seven by seven, so you want to add, to have an inch thick card base, add two inches. So because my card is seven by seven, I'm going to make the bottom portion, the white, is going to be nine by nine. I added two inches, right? So my seven by seven card base will now be nine by nine for the box. So cut it down nine by nine, and then that measures, you're going to have a one inch depth to seat your card inside the box. Then I'm going to get back up in my chair <laughs> and you're going to score one inch all the way around your bottom, right? Because all my card bases, I try to do them in white. 
Now the top lid, you're going to add a sixteenth of an inch to that. So it will be nine and one sixteenth by nine and one sixteenth because it's going over top of your card. So you need a little bit of room. So I chose the silver black, but we are going to cover it with polka dotted napkin. Yes, we're going to do some mixed media and uh, put some napkin cover over top of the lid to the box. Take a little bit of my Coca-Cola, just a little bit, fold down my bottom card base, then we're going to cut it out. So cut the insides. See this? The, the score mark go on the inside. Then cut a V on the inside. So I'm just showing you. You want to have a V, then cut a V into... I'm going to show you here. So you have that cut, then go towards the uh, inside. And then you're going to go to the outer side so that you have that shape. See that shape there that you have? It's almost like a W when you're cutting it. If you keep that in mind, you want it to look kind of like a W with the guts missing. And now I need the center. So I just folded it in half because I want to take my one inch punch and punch a hole on each side. See how I get that center? And then I grab it, push it three quarters of the way up, and then punch it out. And then I have, you know, that little uh, hole there so that I can grab hold of the lid and pull it out. And now we're going to do the same thing, like a W to my card base. I go inside there so it looks like I'm making a W. And that's the easiest way I know how to share that with you so it's, uh, you know, doesn't make it too complicated. Then I'm going to take double-sided tape. I'm going to put it on there as well as liquid. And that W mark where we scored it off, that's always going to be on the inside. Okay, so when you're putting your glue down, you don't have to use both. You can use liquid or you can use the double-sided tape. I put a little bit on the outside edge with the orange tape. Then I add the liquid tape because the liquid tape gives me a little bit of playroom where if I put all double-sided tape, once it's down, it's down, right? So here I'm adding the liquid. I'm going to fold it all up for the bottom of the base. Then we're going to move on to the top and we're almost finished, my friends. You stuck with me for this hour and 35 minutes of fun for this beautiful, beautiful release of all this product for my little darling rubber stamps. Thank you so much. And now I'm making sure that the box, the uh, bottom portion fits nicely. Some people like to put the lid on with this down like this. You know, they move it up and they put it down, but I don't. I took it out. I like to do it separately. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the tape off and I'm going to do it in reverse there. So I'll use my bone folder to press it down. And once you get the box like situated where you know it's a 9 and a 16th by 9 and a 16th, it gives you that little bit of room. But you know what? Sometimes it ends up for me to be a little bit too much room. And I'm going to show you if that happens to you and you have a little bit more space than you would like. I'll show you what you do in that instance. And it happened to me here for some reason. So see how it just had that concave look to it once I got the card seated in there? And I did buy a package of black and white polka dotted napkins because I wanted to make this mixed media lid. And I didn't want to put tissue inside this. I wanted to put napkin. I wanted to fold the napkin inside instead of the tissue paper. So I cut out pieces that were one inch, right? Because it's one inches all the way around and I needed some stability. So what I did, I put double-sided tape because I had one inch double-sided tape here. I put that on my black cardstock and I wrapped it around the inside of the box. That gave me that stability that I like. You know I like things nice and firm on my cards. And sometimes if the cardstock is a little flimsy, 
I add this to the inside. So watch what I do. I put the double-sided tape on the outside of my one inch line of cardstock I cut out and I put it on the inside of the box. Easy peasy. And I just keep going around. Once you get all of that nice and stable and thick, take your one inch punch, go back over it and punch out those little holes again, you know, those little stabilizers in the lid. Then I went and I did the same thing to the outside of my box. Uh, the card was a little thicker than I wanted, you know, that than I anticipated. I, I wanted it that thick. I created it that thick, but I needed the sides of the bottom base to be a little firm you know, a little thick as well. So I just took my white cardstock, cut it off to one inch, put one inch uh, double-sided tape around it, and then I went around the box. I didn't go around the corners, however. I just cut it to size it, like so that it was perfect right to the edge. And then it made it nice and firm, just the way I wanted it. Uh, gave me the thickness that everybody watches my tutorials. You know I like my cards thick and my card box is just as thick. And because I'm going to add the napkins to it, look at that, I'm just playing with it again. It's so crazy cute. Had one inch, just about one inch polka dotted uh, ribbon in my stash. So I put some double sided tape on the back of that went all the way around making sure I stopped at the corner edges right there on both sides. I didn't do it on the side that I had the half moon on uh, the right and left side, but I did do it on the outer portions. I just thought it add a little element of um, material, so that added to a different texture. And now we're going to get into my little three millimeter eyeballs. They're the tiniest, tiniest of tiny. <laughs> and I'm going to put it on. Hunter thought it would look so cute to have the boggly eyes on this top little doggy on the doghouse. So his eyes were, you know, jiggling as long, you know, along with the tree. So this is how I keep my boggly eyes all my different sizes inside the craft mate and we're going to put them away hunters there nanny where do you put those so i thought i'd show them one size is three millimeters and then the next size beside it is four millimeters you can always use that uh, size when you're doing little animal creations i think it's nice so let's put that back and get back to our project now we'll do a little replay. I'm going to open up the napkins that I bought, the small napkins for the polka dots. We're going to go over the elements, open it up, look at the surprise of <laughs> little dogs on there. And now we have our box and then we're going to put the inside with some of the napkins to put our card just to protect the edges. We went to all that work to create it. Then I'll put uh, a couple of napkins on the outside like this to protect it and then the lid. And I love the way that we have the ribbon on the sides and now we'll decoupage the top portion with the napkin and it's as easy peasy as that. You don't have to add anything else. You could leave this element just like that with the black and white box would look as pretty as can be. Um, but I just wanted to add some mixed media to the project and I think you'll agree with me. Uh, it just does add something. So get out your Mod Podge. I use the mat, but don't forget to take the uh, napkin and separate it. There's two portions, yes. It didn't bother me to have a little bit of texture, but you do want to separate it. And uh, then you have that little lip from the ribbon that we have on the side so it made it you know I kept the lid on to create this I didn't worry about having you know gave me the stability I needed to actually do the mixed media piece and uh, yeah just rip it with your hands take the Mod Podge go over it and crinkle it all up you get that nice crinkled look you get the polka dots that's in that sincerely yours uh, six by six paper pack by uh, LDRS. 
uh, little darling rubber stamp packs. Those six by six papers are so super thick that they are gorgeous. And every element that every paper element you saw me use in this card was from that one six by six pat pack. I love it. Then let this dry. So you can fast, you know, dry it with your heat tool. I did that because when I decoupage like this and I've used uh, paper products to make the lid, I am going to get the a piece of cardboard, you know, the outside piece to a 12 by 12 paper pack. I'm going to put the white portion on the inside so that this box is nice and hard. It's firm on the lid. And uh, that's why I saved those. So here it is. It's just, uh, you know, the outside of a 12 by 12 pack. See how it kind of crinkles there with the Mod Podge? I put some cardboard, 9x9. Nine nine. I cut it out of a lid of a 12x12 12 12 pack. I left the 16th of an inch so that I could have the black lip. Gave me stability there. And there's my project as a design team member for Little Darling Rubber Stamps. Please go over to the blog hop and check out the beautiful, beautiful projects. Leave some love there and comment because you're going to have an opportunity to win some fabulous stuff this week. I'll leave everything on my blog. Thank you for joining me today. I know the other design team members will love hearing from you. You're going to see some wonderful projects with this wonderful release from Little Darling Rubber Stamps. Thank you for subscribing to my channel for your likes and for your comments. You know I really appreciate it. And now I'm going to go over and check out the blog and see what's happening over there because I know it's nothing but goodness. And I would like to see you join in the fun all week long. Enjoy the pictures and have yourself a blessed week, my friends. Thank you.